In this video, I'm going to show you guys step by step how to make a trolling tube for striped bass and bluefish in the Northeast and any other application you might want to use this tube for. So, first, I'll start by um, going over exactly what's needed. I picked up this tubing at Home Depot. I think it's half inch inside diameter and maybe three fourth inch outside diameter and it's a soft flexible nylon tubing I'll provide the link in the uh, description it might actually be vinyl tubing but um, just click on that link and you'll be able to get the exact same tubing um, I have but uh, the main point is to get something that's really flexible and pretty soft the next item that we have are ball bearing swivels from American Fishing Wire 260 pound the main um, importance of this is that they're ball bearing swivels and that they're also pretty big so they fit in the tube without much space on the outside and you could crimp them tight to the tube so now we'll move on to hooks you can see this we have Gamakatsu live bait hooks 9 I find this is a good size and good hook to use with a tube and worm um, the size is good for hooking striped bass and bluefish, which have pretty large mouths, and uh, Gamakatsu makes nice and sharp hooks. Now, we have, uh, this is 40 pound American fishing wire, single strand wire. This is going to be used inside the, the tube to make sure that um, your hook is secured and you're not going to lose any fish. Then we have uh, this is Malenko single strand wire 0.045 gauge and basically this wire is used to form like it, it's not actually used to secure the hook or the swivel really but it does help in forming the shape of the tube so this is very important for getting that nice curve in the tube and uh, this company has uh, wire at a pretty good price. Now we have the tools. You will need a pair of pliers. These are linesman pliers that electricians use but uh, anything that you could get a good grip with and twist some wire will be very helpful. For the final step of making the tube you will need hog ring pliers and some hog rings. This is just to secure the uh, ball bearing swivel to the front of the tube and make sure nothing slips down and uh, through the tube. I almost forgot guys, but you'll also need a small piece of string and I'll get to the use of this later. So here's the finished tube that we're trying to make in this video. It's about 12 to 18 inches long. And it's got a nice S curve in it from that uh, mono wire. That really helps the tube hold its shape. And the other wire inside is just keeping everything intact so you don't lose um, any hardware and you don't lose any fish. So let's get started on making the tube. Um, the first step I'm going to do is take a piece of this uh, Malenko wire. Careful so it doesn't all unspool on you. And I'm going to take a piece roughly like 18 inches or so. So actually I'm cutting a piece around 20 inches. Um, a little extra is needed to wrap your piece of wire around the swivel and also the hook. So now that I got my wire here. I'm going to take my ball bearing swivel and stick uh, one end of this pliable mallon wire through one side and maybe around three inches, bend it back over. Like so. And then I'll begin to uh, Twist this wire together. So 
So with this Malin wire, I'm just going to be twisting it, um, the two strands so they're evenly twisted. I'm not going to do any like K-wire twist, just a regular twist. So this is what the uh, soft pliable Malin wire should look like once you've twisted it to the swivel. Um, nothing special, just twisting the two wire two uh, pieces of wire together uh, not a haywire twist just a simple twist of this wire so just move the hook up to uh, where you think you'll want it on the tube this tube looks a little long so far so I'm gonna shift it into place maybe I'll want my tube around there that's like I don't know, 16 inches at least. Um, that looks good. And I'll just cut off this little nub so it's easier to twist. So there I've got my hook in place. And then I'll just do the same thing I did to that swivel. So here's the hook end. It's uh, done the exact same way as the uh, swivel end. And now that we have the swivel as well as the hook on, we're going to attach the uh, single strand 40 pound test um, American fishing wire on. So what I'm going to do with this regular single strand wire is just connect it to the exact same point where the Malin wire was, the exact same swivel and the uh, the hook eye. Um, just gonna do something different though. I'm gonna do a haywire twist with this regular wire. Um, this is much more secure, and this is what we're gonna count on to uh, keep our uh, hooked fish on. So I got it attached to the uh, swivel, and now I'm gonna go. Attach it to the hook side. Make sure to try and get the two wires to be the same as possible, like the same exact length. So just straighten out that Malin wire. Maybe wrap this uh, single strand American fishing wire around a couple times. Nice and straight. Keep the swivel straight, the hook straight, and then you'll be able to find exactly which length you need for this. And then once you got it, do another a wire twist on the uh, hook side. Guys, try and see this. There's two wires connected to that hook eye. There's one of the Malin flexible steel wire. And then we got this American fishing wire, both connected to the same eye over here. Haywire twist on that one, and this one just regular twist. And now, on this side we have basically a repeat of the other side. Haywire twist on this regular fishing wire and this soft flexible steel uh, wire, just a regular twist. Now we're gonna add the tube itself to its skeleton. Just gotta find the end. And so I'm gonna cut a piece of tube the exact length we need. So this is kind of difficult sometimes, but just, you gotta line up the uh, barrel swivel so only one ring is hanging out the top. The other ring is going to be inside the tube and used to secure the uh, tube um, to the actual skeleton. And then you want to line up the, uh, the hook at the back and make sure that uh, a little over like half of the uh, hook is hanging out. So once you line up both 
the skeleton and the tube exactly where you want it. You're just going to want to hold the spot where you think it's good with your finger and make the cut. So I'm going to make the cut right there. It's better to be a little big than small at this point. Alright, so I got a piece of uh, tubing right here. If your tubing's too small, don't worry. Um, you could build a tube with the uh, with that piece too. You just have to make sure to make your hardware lined up for that piece of tubing, and that's a little more difficult to do, but it's also not hard. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna use that piece of string. So just tie that a uh, little knot to the swivel of your skeleton. Maybe just do a couple of uh, overhand knots. So I got an overhand knot to the uh, top of the swivel. Now that we have a uh, string tied to the swivel, I'm just going to start threading this uh, little rope through the piece of tube that we cut. And at this point, you start working the swivel and the skeleton through the tube. You gotta hope it lines up pretty good because uh, otherwise we gotta cut a new tube. Alright, so this tube lined up pretty good. The hook is a, a good amount in and out at, at the same time. Now we're up to the part where we have to secure the uh, skeleton of the tube to the top of the tube using this hog ring. Now this half inch hog ring is actually, um, this little gap between the two points right here is a little too small to fit over the tubing that I got from Home Depot. So I'm gonna have to use um, my linesman pliers and another set of pliers. So I'll just use these um, hog ring pliers to just bend, try and bend that gap open a little bit so that gap is a little bit wider now and that should fit nicely over the tube all right so now we're going to use these split ring pliers this uh, hog ring fits nicely into these pliers because there's a there's a little groove in these uh, hog ring pliers made for hog rings so they're definitely worth getting. I think they're like $10 on Amazon for this pair. Um, so I'm just going to hold the, uh, the tip of this swivel, just the extended straight. And then I'm going to see where that uh, body of the swivel and the little neck goes to the ring. That's exactly where I want to put this hog ring. And I'm just going to and push the tube into the hog ring while also squeezing the hog ring pliers and then just pushing the material down into the hog ring. Alright so I got the hog ring on there and the uh, the entire tube is now secure. It's not going to slide around and the frame is just going to stay in place. This is now what the hog ring looks like attached to the top of the tube. As you can see, half the swivel, one ring is sticking out, freely moving, which reduces line twist, and the other is inside the tube, um, allowing that hog ring to go around and securing the uh, skeleton of the tube to the tube itself. So, uh, I got a knife now to cut that little flood hole in, in this tube. I'm just going to start by uh, making a lengthwise cut. Just easy to poke your knife straight down and cut through this material. So 
So there we have it. So here is the finished tube. I just cut that little flood hole in. And um, what I like to do is just bend it around my arm to give it that classic S snake shape. Um, so yeah, enjoy your tube. The, this is a, a lot better than buying tubes from the store. It's a lot cheaper. You'll save money. And they're, I think they're a lot better quality. You get a flood hole up here, which a lot of tubes don't have. And you're using quality gamakatsu hooks and swivels, as well as good quality wire. So these tubes should hold up. They hold their shape. They won't break. And they're just all around good quality.